Well, today I'd like to teach you how to make paper beads. And one thing I'll tell you is that the paper, what it looks like, really has nothing to do with how the bead is going to end up in the end. So don't let pattern, you know, guide you too much because you're really not going to see a whole lot of the pattern just go by color. But it is nice to have some shadings of different tones in there so that the bead turns out neat. Um, so anyway, here are some of my paper beads, and so let's get started and see what we have. Well, first what I did was I took a 12 by 12 piece of scrap paper, and I cut it in half, so it's six inches. You flip it over on the back and take a ruler, and what I had done is it had been a long time since I started making these and hadn't finished it, so I had to lay it on the paper, and it ended up being that they were an inch long. So you start on one end of the paper, marking an inch, you know, every inch. On the other side of the paper, you want to start with a half an inch, and then go to your inch marks. What that does is let you get that peak for the triangle. So then I'll take this, and you're going to end up with a little bit of waste at first. And you want to go from the corner of the paper here over to that half inch mark. And then go from your one inch mark that you had over to the half inch mark going the other way. And then just start going from inch to inch mark. So from that one, an inch is here, an inch is here, an inch is here. So then I'm going to go back and forth, making the triangles. I want you to be able to see, so I'm going to have to do it a little bit backwards from what I would normally do it. Let's see if I can get it somewhere close. All right, then take your scissors or a paper trimmer. I like scissors myself, um, but if you're more comfortable with a paper trimmer and want to be flipping it around in there, that's fine. And like I said, this is going to be your waist, so you want to put that off to the side. And then you just go ahead and cut out all your little triangles, and these are going to end up being your beads. Okay, so I'm going to set that. Actually, I better cut out more than one so I can show you at least a couple. All right, so I'm going to put my paper over here. Now what I do is I take, I want to get this over here so it's easier for you to see bead jars, move those aside. I got a lot of different projects going here at the moment. Um, you take your little triangle, and what I did is my grandmother had this very long needle in her sewing basket. I have no idea what you sew with that, but it's a very strong needle. And you start by laying the edge of that, bottom edge of that triangle, and kind of trying to roll it around the needle to get it started. And sometimes it can be a little tricky to get that started, but then you just kind of push and start rolling it. I usually have to readjust my fingers and kind of tug on things, and you want that tapering on each side to be as even as possible. So you want to try to keep that peak going in the center so when you end up at the end of your bead, it's kind of going down the middle instead of off to one end. And I don't know if you can see that or not, that um, there's equal tapering pretty much on either end. I got a little scrap there. I'm going to just rip that off. And you just keep rolling until you get that peak to go around. Now I've taken a mixture. You can either use Mod, Mod Podge or um, I've taken white glue and made myself a little pan out of foil, and I've put some water in it just to thin it down, and I want to put a little bit right where that end is going to be. And what I do at first is just roll it around, and this is where this can get a little messy. I roll it around, I find the end, and sometimes hold it with my thumb for a little bit just to make sure it's going to stay. Take a little more glue and then start dabbing it on there. This is like a clear coat that's going to seal it and help it to stay in place and be a uniform bead at the end that won't come unraveled. I know they make some other kind of thing. I think it's called diamond glaze, which is a clear coat 
type thing that makes it really shiny. And um, you can use that too if you'd like. I was just trying to use things that I already had here so I wouldn't have to spend any more money. But um, it's funny, I had Mod Podge, but I have no idea where it went. And if you saw the whole craft room, you can probably get an idea by what you can see that it's a little messy. <laughs> so anyway, you put your coat on there, and then I have an old cutting board here, or um, a little plastic dish, and these I put on there last night, and they come off pretty easy. I just lay them there to dry, so I just push it off the needle, and then go on to your next one, which I buried somewhere. Hmm, where did that one go? Hi, here it is. So then I'll, you take it again, I'll do one more so you can see, and you just start rolling that up on that needle and again just trying to keep it straight and it helps to keep it in the center of the needle where the size is uniform. I've noticed I've had trouble before if I get it too close to the end where it's skinnier and then the other end is up where it's thicker. So then you just roll it until you get it in the center there. You gotta hang on kind of tight. I can see I'm a little crooked, so I'm gonna go back and just make sure it's pulled tight. And then give it a little bit of glue. Roll it around. Kind of hold it for a second with your thumbnail, or sometimes I use the end of the paintbrush to hold it. And then just kind of, I'm trying to hold the end with my thumbnail so it doesn't spin so much until I want it to spin. And then just start coating it with that glue and water mixture. You don't want a lot of water in there. You don't want to waterlog the paper. You just want to give it a nice clear coat on there. And what I usually do is I go back after this has dried, I come back and put one or two more coats on depending on how shiny I want it to be just makes it look a little nicer, makes it look like a real bead um, when you're done. And then what I think I'm going to do, at least this is my plan so far, I can change my mind sometimes, but I have other little beads. These little ones are wooden, and then this is an actual glass bead. And what I'm thinking my pattern might be is something to this effect with um, a paper bead, wood, glass, wood, and then another paper bead. And enjoy making your paper beads. Thank you and have a good day.